Hey everybody, Eric Nathy with MountainModernLife.com. Today I'm going to change the oil on our Class A motorhome. Now I gotta admit the last time that I changed oil on any vehicle was about 16 years ago when I was 16 and I had my first car which was a 1991 Firebird. Um, and since then I haven't changed any oil, uh, needless to say, ever on an RV. Um, but after all the research I've done and everything I've learned, it's pretty much about the same and it uh, shouldn't be too difficult to get done. So if you're looking to change the oil in your own RV, I hope that this video will help give you some pointers or some tips that kind of lead you in the right direction so that you can get it done instead of taking it into the shop. Now, to start off with, the first thing I did is go to the owner's manual. Now, I would recommend you do that, even though I have to admit I didn't get that much valuable information from it. Now, the problem with my owner's manual is that it actually highlights about four to six different engines. So they speak in generalities and can... And, in relationship to the oil and the oil filter and how to go about it um, so there's no specifics on the specific engine that we have but uh, needless to say I did read it and they did recommend the 5w30 um, uh, oil weight uh, and as far as the oil filter goes they gave zero information on what type of oil filter to use or which one to match up with what um, so I reached out to a local RV maintenance dealer and uh, talked to a gentleman over there and he informed me that I should most certainly go with the 5W30 and not with uh, the 10 or anything a little bit higher than that. Um, and he also told me too that with the amount of mileage that I have on my vehicle, the synthetic blend would be all right also. So I went ahead and went with the 5W30 in a synthetic blend and should be good to go. Now, I was still left without knowing which filter to get, so I went to uh, Napa Auto Parts and I spoke with them there. I explained to them that I have the 8.1 uh, Vortex General Motors engine, and he looked around in there, and what he found was that uh, he had an example of that exact same engine in an 04 one-ton Chevy. So he looked in there and found out which filter that engine took, and then we went ahead and went with that one, which is a 7099 filter. So this should fit on there and everything should be good to go in that way um, one more thing too real quick before I move on about the oil is that uh, in as, as useless as the owner's manual was it was very adamant about making sure that no matter what oil you get you make sure that it has this star circle symbol on there from the American Petroleum Institute that basically says that they have certified the oil and uh, they repeated that multiple times in there so uh, just if you're looking to do that you should probably uh, take that approach as well so as we move forward over here, I also have uh, my drain pan. This is a seven quart drain pan. My engine should require 6.4 quarts of oil. So all of that should fit in here and we should be good to go. Um, also here, I have uh, my oil filter wrench. Now there, they didn't have the oil filter wrench with the handle that would fit my specific filter. So I ended up going this route. I have heard that a lot of people are able to actually loosen and tighten their oil filter back up just by hand. So that could be approach an approach you want to take, um, you know, whatever you find, however you uh, feel about it once you do your research. I got this just in case I needed it. Um, so I may use it, may not. We'll see how it goes once I get underneath there. Um, next I have my funnel. Now I'm gonna be real honest with you, I thought the funnel was quite a bit bigger, um, but you know, having a funnel in general is better than not having a funnel at all. So it may take me a little bit longer to get the oil back into the engine when I'm putting it in because of how small this is, but like I said, it's better than nothing. Um, now the drain plug on the oil pan is 5 8 and uh, I'm pretty sure that's a generic size that a lot of engines have and I thought that I had a socket or a wrench that was 5 8 Turns out I don't. Um, so I didn't know what to do. Uh, I decided, oh, I'm going to go ahead and use um, a pair of pliers and because generally with the drain plug, plug what I've seen is that it's really you just got to get it loosened up just enough so that you can twist it the rest of the way uh, but then i was looking through my toolbox for everything and i found this tool that i've had since i was about 12 years old it's actually a skateboard tool i knew there was a reason i never threw it away um, but this side is actually 5a so this should work really well for the oil drain plug so we're going to give it a go and hopefully when we get down there it works if it doesn't well then we'll find a, a different route to go now one of the most useful videos I watched on how to change the oil in your RV was from Trek with us. Uh, and he gave a couple good tips that I'm actually gonna follow. Um, one is he suggested that uh, you put a tarp down. 
um, mainly because you know you don't want the oil spilling everywhere and things like that so I do have a tarp I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath there um, I'm also doing uh, my oil change on grass versus uh, on concrete like he was so I actually have a couple pieces of plywood down there also which will give me a solid surface and hopefully protect me from whatever uh, ants are underneath there but then I'm gonna put the tarp over that so if I do get any spillage it'll go on there and I can clean it up pretty nice um, he also uh, mentioned another tip that I found uh, very useful and made complete sense to me and that's that he opens the oil input plug in up in the front uh, where you put your oil into the engine and then drains the oil he said it gives it more of a, a spillway so instead of the oil trying to come out while the air is trying to come in it just uh, flows out um, so very good tips from Trek with us thank you very much for putting that information out there um, but other than that that's about everything we're going to be using to get the job done i hope everything goes smoothly and uh, i hope uh, some of this information's already uh, helped you out along your way now the first step you're going to want to do is actually turn on your engine Now the reason you turn on your engine is because it heats up the oil, makes it a little bit thinner, and then that way when you drain the oil plug it comes out um, a little bit smoother. Um, so I let my engine run for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm imagining the oil might be a little warmer at this stage, so uh, just something to keep in mind if you're taking this approach. Uh, be careful that way. Um, also too, I forgot to mention, I am going to actually be wearing uh, gloves that way um, when I go to put uh, the drain plug back in and the oil oil filter back on I can take the gloves off and uh, it won't be as slippery um, but anyway uh, let's get into it all right so here we are we're underneath you can see I got my drain pan right here I have it lined up with uh, our oil drain plug right here um, turns out that little skateboard tool I was going to use was 5 8 and that's not going to work Ours is actually 9 16 so I have a wrench. I actually found, a, you know, a little set in the back of the car, an emergency set, and I had one. Um, so we're going to go ahead and loosen this up. We're going to go ahead and drain the oil in here, and um, hopefully where I got you guys positioned right now, it's not going to splash on you. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and move you back just a little bit, and then we should be good there. Um, I got myself, you know, one of these. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up, and then we're going to drain uh, the oil out. So hold tight with me for a second. All right, so that didn't go as planned. Uh, as you saw in the two clips before, I did try the skateboarding tool and my 916th socket, uh, both of which actually fit on the drain plug really snug, felt like they're actually the right size. However, when I would put a little bit of pressure and it wouldn't turn, it would actually slide off the uh, drain plug bolt there. And so last night I went to Walmart a few different times trying to find different sizes that may fit it. However, the, bet, the ones that fit the snuggest and actually made it on there were the 916th and the skateboarding tool so I'm not sure if the drain plug bolt itself is actually sort of uh, maybe stripped a little bit on the outside so luckily for the next couple days before we take off uh, we're still next to my parents so my dad's gonna cruise down here in a few minutes he has a crescent wrench we're gonna get that thing and uh, tighten it down to the size we need and then that should be able to get us to loosen it up so we'll be right back with you here in a minute underneath the RV and we'll get the drain plug going and then continue on with changing our oil all right so here we are my dad showed up and he brought the awesome crescent wrench now we're gonna go ahead and try this first if this doesn't work we also have our vice grips now once we tighten this down on that uh, 
uh, bolt drain plug, it should not remove at all. So we should probably just use this first, but I want to see what the crescent wrench is going to do. So let's give it a go. Oh, we got a little wiggle there. <clears throat> oh, oh, we might just be spinning. Let's give it one more go. Just spin and we're gonna go with the vice grips. So I'm sure you're familiar with vice grips, but you turn this in and then you're able to lock the clamps together so that they stay a specific size. There we go. All right. So now we're going to line this up, make sure that the drain plan here is in the right position, and we'll give it a go. Ah, there it is. Finally, after all the trial and error, we've got the oil coming out. So now we're going to give this some time, let it drain. Uh, once it's done draining, I'll clean up this uh, drain plug a little bit more, uh, wipe it down a little bit, put it back in place, and then we'll move on to the oil filter. So our oil has been draining for a little bit. We still have a little bit of drip up here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and wipe it up a little bit and uh, put the drain plug back in position so that we can move on to taking the filter out. So as you can see here, here is my drain plug. Um, it's got a little rubble thing, rubber thing on there, but if you look at the top section here, you can see that uh, it's a little bit stripped there, um, so that makes it difficult to get out. Now, the vice grips work really well, as you saw, um, but uh, one thing you guys can do if you want um, is a lot of times it's not specifically the drain plug that actually plugs the oil. Um, a normal bolt can work if you put it in there, if you find this stripped, or if you're ever doing your own oil and changing it out and you can't get it off, um, don't freak out if your sockets aren't working or your wrench isn't working. You can always use a vice grip. But uh, anyway, we'll give this a little clean up here and then we'll put it back in position. Brand new. See how quickly that actually stopped the oil from coming out? It's really those tons of threads that stop it, not so much the rubber plunger on the end. Uh, anyway, so when you're tightening this up, you don't need to tighten it too much. You just need to make sure that it's secure and it's not going to be moving around. And considering how tight mine was before and how hard it was to get off, I might leave it a little bit looser. That looks about good to me. All right, so now our drain plug is back in, our oil's all out. Um, now on to getting the oil filter out. All right, so we're underneath here. We've got our oil drained and we got our drain plug put back in. Now it's time to get out the old oil filter. Um, as you can see, I've got oil on myself. So just a note, probably don't wanna wear clothes that you don't wanna ruin. Um, so, uh, I've heard a lot, seen a lot of people, uh, changing their oil that are able to just unscrew it with their hand. Um, so I'm going to reach up there. Hopefully I can do that and, uh, that'll make this real easy. Otherwise I'll use the oil filter wrench that I got, um, in here, but, uh, let's go ahead and give this a go. Ah. 
Ah, there it comes. So look at that. And there it is. Our oil filter has been removed. Um, and I got oil all over myself. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, actually probably right here in the oil pan. And then I'll clean it out here in a second when I get done with it. Um, so one of the tricks here that uh, you've probably heard in all your research is that uh, when you're putting your new oil filter on, you want to uh, lube up the ring that you're putting in there. Um, so if you want to, you could use um, new oil, but when you circulate it around this ring, sorry about that, when you circulate it around this ring right here, it's not actually going to be any oil that's going back in your engine or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to dip my finger into my old oil just to lube up this ring here. And then I'm going to put it back in there because um, it's not going to be circulating and uh, it shouldn't hurt anything anyway. But uh, let me do that real quick. Now what that should do is help make a better seal once we put it back into place. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what we can't do here. My hands are a little oily and I got it tightened in there pretty decent uh, but what I'm going to do is wipe my hands off. I'm going to wipe the filter off and then I'm going to try to tighten it just a little bit tighter with my hand um, but considering I could loosen it up with my hand before I think as long as I hand tighten it I should be good. All right, so now at this stage, we've got the oil filter changed. We have the oil drained, the drain plug back in. So now we just need to go to the front, refill it with the new oil we have, and then we should be good to go. Uh, check back up with you once we get to the front. All right, so here we are. As I mentioned before, we had the drain plug removed. We let all the oil out and then we put the plug back in remove the oil filter put the new oil filter in place everything's good to go so now it's on to putting the oil in now um, this is our oil cap you should be able to see it right there we actually had it removed um, while we were draining the oil to help give better airflow so that it drained quicker but i just wanted to show you guys that uh, actually goes right there but for now we're going to put it to the side we're going to use our funnel now i know i showed you before the little bitty funnel that i had well uh, along with having the vice grips and the crescent wrench my dad came and saved the day with a much better funnel so this is going to make uh, our lives a lot easier anyway we put that in there then we grab our oil which like i said before in the owner's manual make sure that it has the star circle for the american petroleum institute and says that it's certified that's what our owner's manual specified. Now, technically my engine's supposed to take 6.4 quarts. Uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put six in, then we're gonna run the engine for a little bit, test the levels, and then if we need to add some more, we'll go ahead and put it in then. But let's get to it. All right, so here we are with number six. I did want to point something out that we're going to do here. Um, we're actually going to use our empty uh, quartz here, and we're going to put our old oil in it. Um, there's a there's a few different ways you can recycle the oil if you if you'd like. 
Um, fortunately for us, where we're at, we have a place where we're able to take it and they're going to be able to uh, reuse it and kind of do self recycling. But uh, if you're somewhere else and you don't have that, um, I know that O'Reilly Auto Parts will actually take your old oil and they'll also take your old filters. Now the trick is with the filters is that you need to make sure that you let them drain. I believe it's 12 hours at minimum, but preferred 24 and that just makes sure that all the oil that's in the filter actually comes out and is no longer in there. Um, so just something to look at. As far as the other uh, car places like AutoZone and Advanced Auto Parts, I'm not sure if they have the same same um, uh, situation where you're able to recycle there but I know for a fact that O'Reilly's uh, does have that available so anyway I'm gonna put the last cord in and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, plug it up and then start it up and let it run through a little bit All right, so like I said, I'm gonna let this drain through there a little bit more, then I'm gonna put the plug on, and uh, then we'll go start it up, and uh, when we go to test the levels and make sure we have enough oil, I'll come back and uh, show you how we do that. All right, so did you hear that start up? Now, I don't know if you noticed before when I showed you uh, me starting the engine before we did the oil change, what it sounded like and kind of felt like, um, but it was a little bit rough and it kind of sounded like it was struggling a little bit. And I'm not gonna lie, when I cranked up the engine after doing the oil change to let the oil flow through um, so I could make sure I have the right amount in there, it was smooth and you, you could almost feel it. I, mean, I, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just really excited about how it felt and how it sounded, like it was really awesome awesome and to be able to do that um, definitely hope this video has helped you out so far but anyway we're gonna pull out the dipstick clean it off put it back in see how much more oil we need to add if any at all now I do have to warn you these RV oil dipsticks are extremely long um, so just do your best to keep it clean get it back in there and then do it all over again All right, now I've got to push back in there, so we're going to pull it out and take a look at it. Based on what I can see, we're right in the middle of the operating range. Um, so we're going to go ahead and leave it where we're at now, and then uh, in the, here in a couple days, me and Katie are actually going to be taking off. Um, so what we'll do is when we first uh, stop to fill up gas, I'll go ahead and check it again, see what we're at, make sure we're good. Um, if we're good, we'll keep cruising. If we're not good, I'll use that extra cord I got to go ahead and uh, uh, put some more oil in it. But uh, I'll meet back up with you here in a second and talk about uh, everything I learned and uh, what I think you should take into changing your own oil. All right, so here we are. We have successfully changed the oil in our Class A gas RV. Now, the thing is, there are a couple things I want to note here. Um, one, I did run into difficulties uh, getting the drain plug out. Uh, the way that we overcome those uh, was by using a vice grip where I was able to clamp down on the drain plug bolt that uh, seemed to actually have been stripped a little bit, but the vice grips allowed me to clamp it down real tight so that I was able to loosen it up and get it out. Um, from there, it drained really easy. We used the Trek With Us um, uh, idea or uh, tip that they came out with in their video, which I'll link to their video in the description below. But we used their tip of having the oil cap up front off while we were draining the oil, and our oil drained out extremely smoothly. So again, thank you Trek With Us for that. Um, and then uh, also you can see here that I have one quart of oil left. Um, we actually used the six quarts to put in there. Uh, then we ran the engine for about five minutes uh, to let it warm up and let the oil get down into the filter. 
filter and see how much we were at. Um, once I pulled out the drain plug, cleaned it off, put it back in, pulled it out again, I saw that we were right in the middle of the operating range. So I decided to let that go because here in a couple days, me and Katie are going to be hitting the road. So when we fill up for gas the first time, I'll go ahead and recheck the oil, make sure we're still in good operating range. If we're not, I'll add this other quart of oil. Um, one other thing that we did want to touch on is that um, part of the reason that we ended up going with a gas RV is because we knew that diesel engines required a little bit uh, more money to service and take care of. And at the same time, I felt like with a gas engine, I could learn enough to handle some of the standard maintenance by myself. Um, and that really proved to be the case uh, today where we were able to do that. Now, for us to change our own oil this time, it cost us $50, um, but there were a few things that we had to purchase that we won't have to purchase again. Um, one is the drain pan, um, two is the filter wrench, um, and uh, you know, countless other sockets trying to make it fix, which uh, those will be returning. But um, if you're going to be changing your own oil, uh, there are there are some savings you could do there. You might not need the filter wrench. Um, I was actually able to unscrew the filter by hand. It was tight and it was difficult, but I was able to do that. And then when I put it back into place, I was able to tighten it up by hand. So I didn't even actually end up using the filter wrench. Just something to think about. But um, overall, for the oil and the oil filter, I think it ran us roughly around $38 or something like that to change the oil. And then if we're doing this, say, um, without filming it and trying to capture everything that we're doing so that we can you know, show you guys and, and hopefully help you out in your endeavor, um, without doing all that, I would say, honestly, it could take maybe 20, 30 minutes, um, depending on how quickly the oil drains uh, when you remove the drain plug. But overall, I'm really satisfied with the oil change. When I cranked it back up to let the oil run through, I mean, you could seriously feel and hear the difference in the engine. And our oil uh, wasn't even past due on the change or anything. I think just that, you know, getting some clean oil in there really helped. And uh, it, it's pretty crazy how much better it sounded and felt. But uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions or comments or if you have any suggestions for anybody else that may be watching this video or for me and Katie, please feel free to leave them below in the comment section or visit us over at mountmodernlife.com. We're going to be putting up a post here soon, uh, probably in about a week or two, where we'll highlight uh, the steps that we took to change our oil and give a little bit more information. Um, but anyway, thank you much again for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe below and we'll see you guys again very soon.